So welcome everyone to the Toddy Transcriptomics Workshop. Uh, I'm one of your presenters today, Maria Doyle from the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia. And the co-presenter today is Stefano Mangiola from WEHI Walter and Eliza Hall Institute. And for today's workshop, all the packages that we'll be using and the code and the example data sets are provided already set up in the cloud. So that's this link here. I've put it in the chat, but Stefano will put it in there again if you don't have it. So let us know. And when you go to this site, and this is kindly provided by Bioconductor, so thanks very much for having this set up. The name of our workshop is shown here. You select the workshop you want. So ours is called How to Perform Analysis of RNA Sequencing Data Following the Tidy Data Par Paradigm. So please pick this one. And then you just type in an email address to register with the account. So if you can do this as well. So you submit this. And you should see a screen like this with a username, our studio and a password. So I'm gonna copy this password here. And what this is gonna do is launch us, we'll each launch our own um, our studio in the cloud and we all have our own unique URL. So please don't copy my URL if you see it in my browser or anyone else's because you'll kick them out of their session. And this material and this cloud setup will be available for the next eight hours and then it will disappear. So you can play around with it for a few hours if you want. Okay, so I'm gonna launch that workshop and I need to enter then that username, our studio and that password I copied. And if you're having any issues, and use the chat to let um, Stefano know he can help you out. And I'm going to get that launching. And while that is launching, I just want to let you know that after the workshop today, we do have all the material we're going through today available on GitHub. So you can, and that will remain available ongoing. So you can go and have a look and read through that yourself after the workshop if you want. And um, so this website that I have put in the chat, but Stefano can put in again if you need it. This contains a rendered version of the R Markdown document that we'll be going through in this workshop today. And to let you know, so today's workshop, um, if you wanna install it yourself after this, this session on your own laptop, there's a Docker image available with instructions here, or you can also install it in R. So this will get you all the packages, same versions we're using today. And today's workshop, it's, um, it's hands-on demos. So I'll be demoing um, using an R Markdown document and you are free to follow along as well. And we'll also have questions. So you can ask any questions at any time in the Zoom chat and we'll address them as we go or at the end, depending on time. And this is the format for today's. So I'll be taking you through part one, which is showing you how you can analyze bulk RNA sequencing data using a new bioconductor package called TidyBulk. And then part two, Stefano will take you through and that's showing you how you can analyze single cell RNA sequencing data using a new bioconductor package called, currently called Tidy SCE. And, and as you are probably aware, this workshop is extremely short, it's less than an hour. So we are not gonna have time to go to, through things in a lot of detail. This is just to give you an overview of these new packages and then hopefully you can come back to this website and read through in more detail. Okay, so hopefully now my session has launched in the cloud. Sorry, I have to interrupt. I think that then I have the same problem. Oh. So several people said that we're still having a launch screen on Zoom. I have the one. I thought I made some mistake, but actually two people, Joe and Shui. Thank you for, you know. Oh, us hang on. So basically, you can't see my. Can you see my screen now? Okay, good. Yes. Okay, so did you miss the work, this website that I was showing you? I think other people all missed it. <laughs> all of oh, them. no, okay. <laughs> okay, well, this workshop material will remain available so you can have a look at this after the workshop. And hopefully the link is in the chat. And I will just very briefly say, these are the instructions to install this material on your own laptop, which you can do after this workshop. And what I was saying is that this is in two parts and it's quite short. So we will be not going into too much detail, but giving you an overview of these new bioconductor packages. 
Okay, so sorry about that screen freezing. Um, and hopefully most of you have your RStudio cloud launched. So this is my version with everything launched in the cloud. And in the files pane, there is a vignettes folder here. And this is the um, R Markdown document that we'll be going through today. So if you click on that, and um, you should see something like this. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do first is to click on this button here, which opens the sidebar so you can see the different sections we're going through. And um, so this first part is on bulk RNA sequencing data, but the whole workshop is about showing you how RNA sequencing analysis can be analyzed following the tidy data paradigm. And why we like the tidy data paradigm is because it provides a standard way to organize data sets. It um, provides easy to understand function names and the data structure remains consistent across the different functions that you use. And this can be done now for RNA sequencing data using this new tidy bulk package that's added to Bioconductor this year. It's step package created by Stefano, co-presenter here. Uh, we'll also see tidy heat map package being used. Okay, so this image here, Oh, by the way, I'm going to be running these code chunks, pressing this play button, and this is what you can do as well to see how the code um, works. And I'll run them and explain as I go. Okay, so this is a work showing the workflow for RNA sequencing, differential expression analysis, and tidy bulk is a package that can help you perform these steps in a tidy way. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is load in the libraries, tidyverse and tidy bulk, some others. And this code chunk here is I am setting up the colors and a custom theme that I'm going to use in the plots we'll be making in this workshop. So I'm going to run that. Okay, and the data set I'm using here for this bulk RNA-seq part is in um, from the airway bioconductor package. And this has eight samples from four different cell lines, and each cell line has got a sample treated with dexamethasone and one untreated negative control. And the first thing we do is convert our data into a tidy bulk table. And this is a tidyverse table format with some information for tidy bulk. And so it looks like this, where we've got our genes, our sample IDs, and our RNA sequencing counts. And we've also got information on what cell line the sample is from, and whether the sample is treated or untreated. Okay, and next thing I'm going to do is a little bit of um, pre-processing pre of the data. So I'm going to shorten the sample IDs. So this is using tidyverse functions, tidyverse mutate, and also add on gene symbols. And here I'm using tidyverse function mutate with the um, bioconductor annotation package to add the gene symbols. So if I run that, and something to point out here is that you'll see us use this throughout the workshop. We're using the tidyverse pipe to chain together different um, functions and commands that we're running. And this is, um, this is good to do because it means that we need to create less temporary variables. We type less and we can see the steps more clearly. So this is part of the tidyverse um, way of analyzing data. And so by running these um, steps here, I have shortened my sample IDs to strip off that common prefix. And I've also added gene symbols to the end here. Okay. And now we move on to steps for RNA sequencing analysis. So one of the things we do is to remove genes that don't have adequate expression for the differential or for the statistical testing. And TidyBulk provides a, a function called keep, abund keep abundant that will can automatically decide which genes to keep, which genes have enough um, expression to be used. And you just give it your, the name of the column that contains your group information and it will automatically detect. And there's more details written here on how it's doing that. 
And so that will add a column to the end called abundance that has identified that all these um, genes have enough abundance to be used for our testing. And another thing we do with RNA sequencing analysis is that we normalize our samples. So this is where we scale our counts to remove differences that aren't interesting between samples. So these are differences relating to sequencing depth and our composition. And you can read more details about what's happening um, here. But just to say that the default method that tidy bulk uses is called um, TMM. So it's from EDGE-R, the EDGE-R RNA sequencing package. And, but there's other methods that you can choose from. And what that is gonna do is add a column, add a few columns at the end, but the one that we're most interesting is that now we have a column with scaled counts. And because this is all in tidy data format, um, it makes it easy for us then to interact with other tidyverse functions. So here we can simply reshape our data and then plot it with standard ggplot functions and take advantage of ggplot's facet wrap to easily create multiple plots such as here. So here I've just created two density plots of the raw counts and the scale counts. So you can see that the scaling has um, made the distributions of the counts in the samples more similar. And that was achieved with just um, a few lines of um, code that's familiar to people who use tidyverse. And for comparison, so this is what we just did there, taking our data and um, scaling it, filtering it, scaling it, and, re and creating those density plots. And if we were going to do that with base R, for example, using edge R, so using the traditional ways of analyzing RNA sequencing data, we would have to write um, a lot more code as here, create more temporary variables, and possibly less intuitive to understand what exactly is being done here. So tidy, tidy bulk makes it a bit um, simpler. And another thing we very commonly do with RNA sequencing data is that we generate a principal component plots or multi-dimensional scaling plots. And tidy bulk provides a method called reduced dimensions, which again, we can take our data that's in tidy format, uh, pipe it into that function. We can choose PCA or NDS methods and tidy bulk will calculate the principal, in this case, principal components for us. And if we have a look, again, we see columns have been added to the end of our table. We've now got PC1 and PC2 columns. And this is added to the end of our input table. So we have the same number of rows that we gave to reduced dimensions. But if we just want to get the principal components for each sample, tidy bulk has a way to get the sample specific information. So let's pivot sample here. So in this case, we can get just so the eight rows, one for each sample, and have the two principal components for each here. And we can then take that data and use it to generate a plot of this um, PCA information. So that's what we're doing here. So again, using ggplot, this all fits nicely um, with, um, with it. Create our scatter plot. We can take advantage of ggplot's color and shape. Um, to color by our treatments, to use shapes to highlight which cell line the samples are from, and to use packages that interact with Tidyverse and ggplot, such as ggrepel. So this enables us to add labels that don't overlap the points or each other. And so now we can see that our samples separate nicely into our treated and untreated groups, and that we have one cell line, the square, that's a bit different to the others. Or another uh, method we can use to examine the relationships between our samples is hierarchical clustering. And we can use heat maps to do that. And a nice function that Tidybook provides is this keep variable that will keep the most variable genes across the samples. We can select, for example, the top 500. And we can pipe that into tidy heat map package here and use add tile to simply add our input annotations of interest. So we can add 
the, the, the column um, information containing the treatments, or we can add the information on which cell line, and we can add the information on which cell line the samples are from. So we get something like this, showing our eight samples, again, separating by treated and untreated, and with one cell line a bit different to the others. But as you can see, again, with a few uh, lines of um, code. And in comparison to, say, a base R method, for example, using edge R, you'd see we have to create a lot more variables and use functions that are possibly a bit harder to understand for people not familiar with the um, RNA sequencing statistical jargon. Okay, and now we get on to the to the guts of the differential expression testing. And so tidy bulk um, quite coolly provides several of the most popular RNA sequencing methods um, that are used. So these are all available as bioconductor packages. So it provides edge R, Limazoom, and DEC2. And you can choose to run one of these, your favorite, or you can run multiple and compare. So that's what's being done here. So in this case, it's taking um, the counts, it's piping it into, so the function is called test differential abundance. You give it a formula similar as you would to what if the, say the edge R RNA seq package. You specify which method you wanna use and you can add a prefix so if you're using multiple methods, you know which of the output columns come from which method. And here we can simply use the pipe to add another method. So both the two edge R methods available or the lim limaboom as well and the seq method as well. And this will all get combined into one table where we'll have columns that tell us which of the methods have produced um, the output columns. And this is a nice way that we can use then to compare um, the, how the different methods perform. Okay, so this is our input table. And now at the end, we should see that we've got columns coming from each of the methods. So we've got our log fold change columns. And we have, yeah, from Zoom and DC2. And we've also got p-value and adjusted p-value columns from each of the methods. And then if we want to compare how the methods are, that's quite easy to do as well, thanks to TidyBulk. So we can um, take our output data frame. There's a pivot transcript um, function from TidyBulk that's equivalent to the pivot sample. It gives us just the transcript specific information. And we can select which columns we want to compare. So if we want to compare the p-value columns from all four methods, we can do that and use a, another tidyverse friendly package called ggalley to do pairwise comparisons of each of the methods. So that enables us to see quite easily here that some of the methods are more similar to each other, for example, the two edge R methods, and some are more different, for example, Voom and DC2. So that's running all, all methods. You can um, also just choose to run one method, so for example, here, so that's using the default um, test differential abundance method, which is the edge R quasi likelihood method. And TidyBook also provides for anyone who wants to dig into the raw results from these edge R, D, seek or Lima methods, you can access them as well. And for comparison, you can, com or you can compare what we just did above to if you were gonna do that with um, a standard um, traditional base R analysis using, for example, edge R. And again, you'll have more temporary variables to create, a bit more typing, and also um, methods that can be um, harder to understand what the function is, is doing. Okay, so I'm almost finished. I'm just gonna show you a couple of plots that you can generate from uh, the tidy bulk output. So here, this is selecting a few genes to use in the plot. I'm taking the top six genes and I'm using um, tidyverse style methods to take the differentially expressed table, sort by p-value, take the top six genes, and pull out the gene symbols. And um, a common plot that we make in RNA sequencing is a volcano plot. And because our 
because tidy bulk, the tidy bulk is producing um, is keeping the data in tidy data format, we can simply pipe that into ggplot, create a scatter plot like so. And um, tidy bulk takes advantage of um, or interacts nicely with ggplot using a custom scale. So instead of having to look at a y-axis that has a negative log 10 p-value, we can see the p-values as they are, and that's thanks to tidybook providing that convenience. Or because this all integrates um, with tidyverse and ggplot, we can also customize the plot um, more as we like and use things like ggplot's color, size, and alpha to tweak things as we want. Okay, and one other plot we make is if we want to look at the individual counts for our top genes, and um, we can do that using strip charts. And again, here we're taking our tidy bulk output using tidyverse uh, filter to select our top the counts for our top genes, and then stream uh, smoothly piping into ggplot, and we can make jittered plot, box plots. And again, take advantage of facet wrap to easily and quickly create multiple plots. So here we end up with a um, plot for each of these six top genes, showing the individual um, count values um, in, in all the samples for both our treated and untreated groups. And because all this is using ggplot style plots, it also nicely interacts with the Plotly, GG Plotly, um, Plotly package, GG Plotly function, so we can make any of these plots interactive as we like. So in this case, we could make that strip chart interactive. And in that case, it would enable us to see which sample. So here we could see which sample the points belong to. Or similarly, we could make an interactive volcano plot or any of the other GG plots that we were looking at. So just with this simple pipe to ggplot. And, uh, and a nice feature that tidybulk has is that it provides this get bibliography function. So this uh, keeps track of the methods that you are using in your tidybulk workflow and it provides them here for you so that then you can use them in whatever publications you're making. So that's quite nice. And then I have one final thing to show you and that's as well as doing differential expression analysis uh, and having packages like Lima and EdgeR and Voom wrapped in Tidybulk, Tidybulk also provides packages for or methods for cell type composition analysis. So this is how you can detect um, cell types that are present in your bulk RNA sequencing. For example, what immune cells are, are present. And this is a thing that's commonly done, particularly with cancer cell samples. So here we have a small data set from uh, a small breast cancer data set from the Cancer Genome Atlas, where there's um, RNA sequencing counts for uh, different patients, breast cancer patients. And Tidybulk provides methods to do this cell type identification, such as uh, cyber sort is a popular one. And you can do that like so. So you can take your uh, table of counts, you can run this deconvolved cellularity function from tidybulk, which will run cybersort by default. And similar to as we saw before, you can reshape that output and plot it then using um, familiar ggplot uh, functions. So here with just a few lines of code, we can identify cell types present in the samples, reshape, and then identify how many, what proportion of each cell type is present in each of these um, patients. So here we can see the immune, pop, immune cell population in these patients. Okay, so that was quite um, just a brief overview of how you can perform RNA, bulk RNA sequencing analysis in a tidy way using this new bioconductor package called Tidybulk created by Stefano. And this is the end of part one. So I'll pause here to see if you've got any questions, otherwise I'm going to pass to Stefano.
Okay, so there's um, one question there, Stefano. I don't know if you want to answer that now. Uh, would you please comment uh, on that? Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, we hopefully those will be out soon. Uh, we have done a, a performance study, a benchmark uh, across uh, comparing Chaibolk with uh, Bazaar um, workflows. And the answer is uh, there is the answer is there is no difference notice, noticeable. We have tested for small data sets uh, with the 20 samples and also for uh, prostate cancer um, data set from TCGA and there is no difference. So it's, um, we are, we are, uh, this was not true as, uh, as soon as we publish you know, on GitHub uh, this package, but we quickly uh, ended up optimizing a lot of uh, points that were the, the bottleneck. So now it's has equal performance. Stefano, we'll probably have to keep any other questions till the end and let you go with your part two, just so we don't run completely out of time. Um, all right, we will have some time for question in part two. So just, just to, <clears throat> to reiterate, uh, we want to show you just uh, quite a few things in a short time. So we understand you might not follow along uh, at such speed. I, I put the link for the web uh, version of this workshop. So I encourage you, now that you know the content of the workshop, to go back and analyze the code and um, um, execute the code by yourself so you can see at each step what data frame you get out of. Uh, okay, so I will share my screen. Um, can you all see it? Yeah, I can. Yes. Amazing. So we have talked about uh, bulk RNA sequencing. Now we will uh, step uh, to single cell RNA sequencing. Um, I will not, uh, I mean, for this workshop, I will assume you have some knowledge of uh, single cell RNA sequencing analysis. So this, the goal of this workshop is not to teach you how to do this analysis, but to show you once them, how you can um, analyze the same data also taking advantage of tidyverse. Okay, so um, this is a a quick example of what's a pipeline uh, for single cell RNA sequencing analysis can look like. Um, there are different steps. I'll quickly scroll through. You can uh, read them here. Uh, there are quite few generally uh, compared to bulk RNA. This is mainly because uh, we have quite uh, a bigger amount of data having sample and transcript information. Here we have another hierarchy level, which is cell information, okay? Uh, so usually we can do a much richer uh, set of analysis because of this. Now, before I start, I have to make a quite um, strong distinction between tidy bulk and the package uh, we, I will show you now, which is tidy single cell experiment. While tidy bulk uh, gives you tidy data representation, but especially a full workflow uh, to analyze your data, tidy single cell experiment is just an adapter to uh, build the level of ab abstraction on the existing uh, single cell experiment object. And this gives you not only the possibility of doing whatever you were doing before with this object, so it's fully compatible also to visualize this object as data frame, as I will show you uh, in, a, in a little. And also extract, manipulate the information of this data frame using tidyverse, which includes um, joining data sets, jo um, adding information to your data set, so on and so on. Um, so the tidy single cell experiment mainly is about data exploration, data visualization, data manipulation, and integration. Uh, while you use the, your favorite packages for cell clustering, cell type classification, so on and so forth. Um, so I will start loading uh, the libraries needed for this. Um, 
uh, for this second part, we will use a subset of uh, a, a peripheral blood mononuclear cell data set that is also present. Uh, there should be a link uh, in, um, in the tutorial uh, for a single cell experiment. So just showing you how these data uh, look like is a single cell experiment object. And the way it gets normally presented to you, it's with just a few summaries. Uh, you don't get a lot of information out of it. Um, and uh, the object is quite complex. You can do, uh, you can observe its structure. Maybe I can just quickly uh, show you that. <clears throat> So it's, uh, it's quite a complex object. It's really optimized for uh, memory imprint and execution. So we want to uh, present the object in a more user-friendly way. So we can just apply the tidy function from this package. And uh, now this data set is showing us in a um, table format where the cell-wise information are presented here. Okay, you can see here is a table abstraction. It's not actually a table, but we can, for what it matters, for us, it, it, it would be rather a table. We can observe it and manipulate it. And we can see here that this is actually a, uh, underneath still a single cell experiment object. In fact, uh, we can use some uh, summarize experiments uh, function to uh, visualize what assays, assays there are there for, uh, for months. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to show you is that we can interact to, uh, with uh, this data frame in the same way we do with Tidyverse. So, um, for example, we might want to polish the cell type annotation, and we can see here that we have two groups uh, we might want to drop this initial G as is not needed, and we might want to extract sample ID from this file path. This is just an example. So what we can do is mutate the column groups, removing the initial G, and extracting the sample from uh, the file with this regular expression. Here that's, um, we have just done that. So we have polished our sample our, sorry, our information. Uh, now, the first uh, step I will show you is how to calculate uh, the scaled log transform counts, uh, which are uh, used in many of the analysis you might do. Uh, in this case, we just use a normal um, coding that is uh, common for um, biconductor-based packages. Um, and so, as you can see here, uh, we take the counts, scale the data, and apply log two transformation. And also, we want to print the what assays are in this object. Uh, and you can see here that log counts has been added to our information. So, uh, by default, uh, tidy single cell experiment uh, visualize this information. This because is the information we more often want to interact with, visualize, and query. However, we can join the transcript-wise information as well. This is quite easy uh, with the function join transcript. And we can specify some transcript names, uh, variable transcripts, and uh, all transcripts as well. In this case, we just want to um, visualize two. You can see here that we get a, a data frame with uh, transcript and abundance uh, for the two, uh, for all assays we have in this case too. Uh, now, I would like to um, point out that when we add the transcript information, uh, this data frame is actually table, it's not uh, an abstraction anymore. So from this way, we might want to do independent analysis or uh, draw summary statistics or, visual, or visualize um, our data. So that's, in this case, what we are doing. We want to visualize the uh, distribution of transcript abundance for our two genes. And we can pipe <coughs> our data frame directly to ggplot, as Maria is showing you uh, 
uh, before we can do it with this object too. In this case, we are just building uh, box plots. And we can take uh, advantage of the tidy form of our data representation uh, as we can use uh, build with ggplot, faceted plot, with so quite rich in information quite easily because transcript is a, is a column in our uh, data frame. As you can see here, uh, this is a, a simple uh, visualization, but you, you can imagine how you can uh, build up on this. Uh, another important step in single cell RNA sequencing analysis is a reduced dim re uh, dimensionality reduction. So as um, Maria showed you for uh, bulk RNA, we can also calculate the principal component with this data. In this case, we just use uh, biconductor packages uh, for, um, such as CRAN and uh, scatter, scatter. Before we calculate the variable genes, and uh, you can see what this variable looks like. Um, it's just an array of uh, transcript names. And now we can, with scatter, uh, calculate the uh, principal components. As you can see that, um, well, this warning is about um, the fact that we have a really small data set in this case for the sake of efficiency. You can um, safely ignore this. But we, uh, we um, receive back our table abstraction with the principal component information added to it in a quite visual and intuitive way. Um, by default, we, we, we get visualize uh, just the first five. And you can imagine now that you can build up on this and visualize this principal component using tidy packages. Now, um, with this table abstraction, you can um, interact with many of the tidyverse packages directly, but in some case, you want to use a package that is not uh, include, included in um, tidy single cell experiments. Uh, for example, like ggpairs, as Maria showed you before, you can convert this table abstraction uh, to a table, simply. Um, let's see. Uh, I will show you here as it will show you uh, on the command line that this is now just a table, okay? Um, and now we can pipe this into our tidyverse uh, tools as we, we like. And uh, we can compare again all versus all our principal components. In this case, we are co coloring by groups. But uh, this is highly modular, so we, you could introducing this plot uh, in a visual way, uh, whatever annotation you have about um, cells. So for single cell RNA sequencing data, because our uh, dimension, data dimensionality is much bigger, uh, there are techniques that uh, gave us reduced dimension in a way to uh, better resolve local similarity. For example, if we want to better resolve uh, some uh, cells that belong to a specific cell type. In case of YAP method, also um, maintaining the, um, how can I say, the value of, so both help us with local and global resolution. In this case, we use a skater from Biconductor with our object, no problem, to, um, to calculate our uh, UMAP dimension. And we want, in this case, the three first dimension. You can see here, we can visualize this object as before our information has been included here neatly. And uh, I will show you how to use it uh, just in a little bit. Before that, uh, I want to add some more information to our analysis. Um, in this case, we want to identify cell clusters in an unsupervised manner. Um, we use SNN uh, tool for, for this, which uh, share na nearest neighbor uh, using the Scrum package. 
uh, in a quite uh, standard way. So we just execute uh, the, um, these calculations to um, infer uh, which clusters could be present in our data. Uh, we just displayed information, as you can see, the label column has been added to our uh, data frame. And this can uh, represent another annotation that we can visualize on our reduced dimension plots. Uh, thanks to the intuitive nature of Tidyverse, we can easily build um, summary statistics. In this case, uh, we use the count function from dplyr uh, to um, visualize the cluster size. In this case, also separating by groups. And you can see here that cluster number one, it in both groups. As you can see here, the number of cells we have is really small. Usually you have thousands. Um, again, uh, we showcase uh, the versatility of, of Tidyverse um, infrastructure uh, for visualization using Plotly uh, and showing you as from this um, data frame, you can, uh, we can quickly produce an interactive three-dimensional plot using the first three um, UMAP dimension. And we can color by the identified clusters. Again, this is a toy data set, but you can see how much more meaning and awareness you can get from adding a third dimension to the data. For example, this third dimension you, you can see here is quite informative. It uh, includes quite a lot of variability, okay? As you can see here, we have, um, let's say three, four clusters and um, we, can, we can appreciate uh, that the automatic uh, clustering did a quite good job in this. Okay, uh, this is just an example, but as more data, this gets much, much more um, valuable. Okay, um, we proceed with the last couple of analysis. Um, another thing we usually do with single cell RNA sequencing analysis is to understand uh, the identity of cells or the identity of the cluster uh, of cells we just inferred. Okay, we can do that automatically, but to, we can also curate the um, automatic classification or classify them manually. Usually what do we do, select variable genes or marker genes uh, for each cluster. And uh, for example, we can uh, produce a heat map with using scatter. This is a quite standard way to do it. And we can analyze for each clusters what are the uh, transcripts that are more abundant. Um, our conclusion based on our knowledge or uh, some literature review. Uh, we can apply so these methodologies on our uh, um, I would like to point out that it, uh, another uh, many pot many more possibilities open up uh, where when we can interact with tidyverse. For example. Uh, if we want a little more um, customization, we can use the tidyverse way uh, from our data frame, just simply joining the variable genes and calling a tidy heat map. And in this case, um, similarly to what Maria showed you before, we can add a tile annotation about our clustering, but also we can add more quantitative annotation, annotations in this case, including the first principal component. So you can appreciate here uh, which cells are neighbors uh, along the first principal component. But you can imagine this can be expanded uh, quite a lot. Uh, clinical annotation, or if you have uh, other information about cells, for example, mitochondrial transcript abundance that might indicate uh, dying cells, so on and so forth. So you can use your imagination and see how can you add layers of 
um, annotation on top of this. And we cannot just use points and ties, but we have lines and bars as well. And this underneath is using a complex heat map, but is wrapped up in a, in a tidy and quite modular um, framework. Um, okay, the last thing is uh, the automatic cell type classification. There are many tools to do this. This is just an example where we are using single R. Uh, some packages involved like cell decks table in the next release of Biconductor. So to avoid headaches of dependencies, uh, we just uh, did this beforehand. So we need to execute this uh, code block. Uh, you can visualize um, a bit on what this code does, and we are just getting out a data frame out of it. Uh, and this is the simple data frame we are getting for automatic cell type classification for our five, class, uh, five clusters, yes. So we get the cluster ID and the cell type ID. Okay, quite simple. Now, we, we can use uh, tidyverse again functionalities to left join uh, this new data frame to our original data frame. Uh, as you can see here, quite intuitively, as you would do with any table. And you can see here that the first label column has been added quite in a robust fashion uh, with our data frame about cells and uh, cluster information. Now you can see here that we are adding information on top of information and uh, we can proceed with that integration or data visualization quite easily. Again, we might want to use um, to visualize some summary statistics. We can see here that um, using count function from, from dplyr cluster is one, as we've seen before, and these correspond to monocyte cluster. We can see that there, are there is another monocyte cluster here, uh, which is cluster number four. Okay. So, um, we have plenty of uh, before that, I want just to show you the last thing. Now, this thing is yet a bit more uh, for, you know, experts in tidyverse, but the, the people that are a bit more experienced in single cell analysis and tidyverse might appreciate the power of this. So, if you, uh, you know, are not into uh, topics yet, you can come back to this workshop and uh, try this out. So uh, when we work with tables, if a powerful concept is the concept of nesting. So uh, often we might want to subset our data set according with some information and a repeat analysis on that data set. Um, so for example, we, with the for loops and so on. Uh, Tidyverse introduced, I think, the most powerful way to do iterative analysis in an um, isolated fashion and quite elegant fashion. And this is uh, thanks to the combination of nest from tidyr and map from pool. Okay, so we have abstracted this powerful concept for single cell experiment object as well. Um, when would we, li we would like to do this kind of subs data subsetting in single cell analysis? For example, if we want to repeat independently analysis, uh, analysis independently for uh, different samples, uh, for example, infer cell uh, type identity for different, make sure that our data integration procedures did not create any, uh, any artifact or uh, deleted some information. Or we might want to um, subsample uh, in a balanced way cells uh, from different samples for visualization. Or uh, as I will show you here, sometimes once we have identified big cell cluster, we might want to repeat those analysis independently for those cell clusters to gain resolution. A common example is different analysis for myeloid and lymphoid, which are two big immune cell populations. So in this case, we have our uh, data set, uh, just to remind you here. Uh, we just want to filter out platelets. This is just an example. And we use mutates to create, to classify cells into myeloid and lymphoid based or on their cell identity, okay? 
So you can see here that we just add a column which is called cell class, lymphoid or myeloid. So I've done this manually. <clears throat> and then you can, we can use the nest um, to get the magic here. You can see here that we got a nested data frame where we have the cell class that we want to separate. And our single cell experiment object, uh, you know, also abstracted as um, data frames in this column. So now what we can do is to use the map function to iterate across, um, across these, column, these um, different subsets in a quite elegant and powerful way. In this case, I just showcase a way to quickly recalculate the variable genes for each of, for each, uh, of myeloid uh, data subsets. And I will just add them as a new column. This is just a quick example. But we, you can see that inside here, you can put the whole uh, workflow. And so iterate your workflow for these um, data subsets as well. So what I'm doing is I'm using mutate to add a variable gene column that is calculated uh, with the map functionality and these three uh, bioconductor uh, quite standard um, functions. And you can see here that we have a new column where five of these top variable genes are printed in. All quite neat. Okay, uh, so, wow, we have not so much time, but um, we would like to do a poll if um, uh, we can. Yeah, so yeah, actually, Stefano, you probably want to wrap up. It's already over. Uh, yes, so I'll give you yes, a few yes, minutes. Yes. Give you a few minutes to wrap up. <laughs> it's very, very nice, yeah. Thanks, the workshop is, is finished. That's what we wanted to show you. So now we can quickly run the poll. And the, at the same time, if you want to ask questions, please do, we encourage that. If, is there any for, um, thanks for the thanks. Thanks, Matt. Oh, Matt is here. Okay. Hi, Matt. It's a it's a it's a great uh, tool. It's very powerful. <laughs> we hope so. Yeah. Um, thanks to the other people that are thanking us. Yes. Yeah, so there is a tidy surat. Um, there, it is, there is a tidy sort package already in CREN, uh, so they act in the same way. So you can see here we are, uh, we are starting to uh, build frameworks that, uh, you know, kind of integrate many data frames. So yes, there is a tidy sort uh, public package. But, um, yeah, just to add, Stefano, I don't think we actually have a poll in Zoom created, but if anybody wants to give an opinion in the chat on what would you prefer to see Tidy SCE to be called, that would be other, oh. Well, no. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's <laughs> quite it. All right, so we can, we can in the meanwhile, pause the question. Uh, you, Maria, yeah. you there the question? I actually created this beforehand, just to make sure, but I don't see any. So it's just a one question. I don't feel like for that doesn't make sense. And it's only if we uh, have a lot of questions so we can pull, yeah. It's just so fine, you know, okay. Um, yes, um, we can uh, copy and paste the... I think, okay. Yo, what's happening? Stuffed. Oh no, I think Stefano was frozen. Okay. Question um, over there, I just had to... Uh, can you hear me? Okay, so I posted here. Okay, so in the last minute, uh, since uh, we are publishing this package on Bioconductor, at, the, at this time it's called Tidy SCE for single cell experiment, uh, but we have been suggested that the acronym could, might not be the, the best choice. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, so I give you four options here, uh, and I, we would appreciate if you just post your answer to what uh, format uh, you prefer. For. This would be really helpful as the package will be published in really one, two weeks. 
Um, so feel free to choose yours and post it there. Uh, Maria, you have a question for you. So the question is, in bulk RNA-seq, is there a way to accelerate Limavum step for large number of samples? Well, as far as I know, in Tidybook is using Limavum, like the normal Limavum method under the hood. So it should be as quick as a using Limavum from the Lima package. Is that right, Stefano? Yes, yeah, so we are just building a framework to organize all these packages. So there is nothing different with Livavum. Um, so, I mean, the answer is no, but the, 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 secret, um, uh, the secret is in, in the Livavum package itself. Um, so yeah, we are just um, calling that algorithm as it is. Citation to user on the other important fetch. Yes, um, yes, so one thing, uh, yes. Thanks for the question, Matt. Uh, we also want to make sure all packages are mentioned, all, also the ones that are usually forgotten. At the moment, we have uh, a, a tidyverse citation, but as you are uh, suggesting, uh, we might um, publish a single uh, package uh, whether they have citation, including R. So thanks for the suggestion. We will definitely do that, yeah. I think you already have R in, in one of them, but yeah, ggplot yeah. I don't think is there yet. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, thanks. If you want to want me to pull, because now I'm not a host, I cannot create another poll. So um, I could name your type, the, the four choices as question one, two, three, four, to see which one they like. If they like tidy SCE, that's question one, they, they just say one, okay? If a tidy single cell experiment, that'll be two. If they want a tidy single, you know what I mean? Do you want yeah. that? So uh, then one, two, three, four, is that okay? We can try, we can try. Let me relaunch it because I'm not a host anymore, and um, so I cannot Amazing. create another one. So I'm going to continue um, launch to see people like. Uh, so please, uh, as Matt did, great, thanks, Matt. Um, yeah. to answer one th is pretty important for us. Yeah. Uh, all good comments. There are also useful. I prefer a shorter package name, but given single segment is the class. Uh, thanks, Amy. That, that's very insightful. Um, last few seconds to make the difference. Cool. So uh, we are happy um, to pass it to, to the organizers. Uh, mm -hmm. Whenever, uh, if there are more questions uh, before the time is over, feel free and, and uh, we'll be here to answer. But uh, yeah, I guess it's up to organizers now. Uh, they create a poll. Thanks for that. Amazing. Is, is this poll going to be uh, permanent? That would be good. Amazing. So uh, if you can, please go into the link where there is a poll and you can help us in that way. There, there is the question uh, specified there. But Stefano, you need to decide in the next couple of days, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, actually tomorrow, uh, tomorrow I will uh, either change or not change the package name. Uh, amazing. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chris. And, and thanks, Matt. I think Matt was saying your own package, tidy bulk, needs to be in the citations. And it, it, tidy bulk has been submitted as a paper and it's under review. Yes, that, that's the reason. Yeah. It will be. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks everybody for attending the workshop today. Yeah, thank thanks you very um, much. Yeah, and uh, Maria and the Stefano and the Fana for the great, you know, 
workshops and uh, powerful tools you guys developed, and there will be mm -hmm. benefit yeah. to the, yeah, the community. So um, we, we encourage everybody to go. Uh, I, I, will, I, I will post the GitHub repository. Uh, if you like uh, these packages uh, and would, you would like to show some love, uh, would be really helpful uh, if you could give stars to these packages as it helps give a bit more visibility. So I will uh, just post uh, the, and we, you, we encourage you to go back to the website of the workshop uh, where is rendered uh, to play around. So I also post that link there.